Everybody, welcome to The Blacklist, the show where we interview the elite. Today, we have my man, Michael. I actually just met him like probably about a week ago. But um, the first kind of way that I found you, dude, was like you've been blowing up on, on TikTok. Like a lot of your, you know, podcast stuff yeah. has like been showing up. Are you doing that on purpose? Uh, I do. So uh, what I tell people a lot of times is you need to repurpose everything. So so my shorts are TikToks are reels. And yeah. you can post them on Twitter if you want. You can post them on Facebook if you want. Uh, the thing is, whenever I hear people like, oh, I don't want to take the time to make this short form 90 second content. I'm like, there's four different big places you can put it. You should be doing it. Yeah. Even if you hire a social media manager, the number of impressions that you can get if you do short. Dude, here's the thing. When Instagram tells you that re they start publishing real or they start promoting reels, what are they telling you? Well, we're a little insecure about TikTok. Okay, we'll take advantage of that. That means right. you need to start posting more reels. And the same thing like uh, with Facebook. And then uh, it, you'll notice that on uh, YouTube, if you start posting uh, shorts, Dude. you'll see channels with nothing but shorts. You will get in hell. I mean, the number of short, I'm not that popular, but like I like 28,000 or 29,000 subscribers. And I got some with millions of views, yeah. shorts. And so the thing is, the, these platforms are telling you what they like. Obviously, YouTube and Instagram are insecure to yeah. some extent. Uh, probably a better word I could use uh, about what TikTok is doing. And so because of that, then they're like, okay, that same type of short form content. I don't know if you've seen, you can do 10 minute TikToks now. Oh, that fuck. Yeah, that type of content is now what's shareable and viral. Yeah. And and it's getting even, uh, I don't want to say worse, but it's getting even shorter. I would, or you, uh, you know, I would recommend, it, you had Justin Waller on here, he's a good buddy of mine. Yeah. And and he's, it was Bulzarian who straight up told me, he's like, the reason why we took off on TikTok is because we do something in the first three seconds. Yeah. My social media manager, who's the who's the best, her name is Char Modell, uh, frequently will have a, a post that she'll post and there's these context that's already built in because she knows me and I have to remind her sometimes, I'm like, Char, we're, we're making content for 12 year olds with ADD. Not, not to say you're 12 year olds with ADD, right, but right. everyone has a 12 year old with ADD, Tasmanian devil in your mind. Yeah. And that's the guy who's swiping all day. Swipe, 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 swipe. He has very low attention span, no patience for anything. Yeah. So the crazy thing has to happen in the first three seconds. Even if the sentence doesn't make sense, even if you go, break into a sentence and you're out of context, you still have to do it in less than three seconds. And it's very easy when you're consuming content all oh, three seconds three seconds that's great but when yeah. you're producing content it's so fucking frustrating right because when you see that you're like oh man i want i want to express my full uh expression about economics or quantum mechanics or whatever and it's like no it's got to pop quick pop you yeah know what I'm, you understand what i'm saying and like i just the immersion of people on vine like king batch or logan paul how do you still doubt this like this is obviously the way the world works now so that's the way that's the way i do it when you do that, you get enough people to watch those Joe Rogan experience. You remember yep. Joe Rogan was one of the first guys. He had the JRE experience, those 10 minute clips of his three hour podcast. Then eventually you're like, man, I've been watching so many of these. Man, that 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 one he did the other day with Elon Musk smoking that blunt, that was funny. Okay, now I'm gonna watch the entire episode. And now yeah. you get people to subscribe to your podcast. That's the way it works. And people, you know, a lot of people don't like that. They're like, they'll sit there and they'll be like, no, it's a meritocracy because my content is better. Therefore, more people will subscribe. Well, I, it, once you get on YouTube for like 10 minutes, you come to the realization the quality of your content means jack shit. Yeah. The quality of your cover photo, the quality of your title, and the quality of your guests means 100 times more. And the quality of your Instagram and TikTok to get people to come back to your YouTube means 100,000 times more. And yeah. it's very frustrating for people who come from the podcast community where it's like, because I said an interesting thing, therefore, because I put a bunch of research into this podcast, therefore it's gonna do better, rather than the reality, which is you had a, a, a shareable three second clip that went viral. I had a clip this morning, hit a million views uh, with Chloe Ture. And it was just like, it was random. It just went viral. And it's just like, we, I, can we explain why it went viral? I don't know. I do know this. In the first three <laughs> seconds, it catches your attention. And that's the reason why it worked. Yeah. And I can tell, like, dude, you're very animated. Like, when I was taking a look at your stuff, it's like, you know, you're very much, like, out there. You speak yeah. very loud. Like, you know, you're, 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 um, you're, you're engaging. Mm. Not too many people are engaging, you yeah. know. Um, so I, the, the one that I found that was, like, super interesting to me was, like, at a time when Andrew Tate was blowing up, yeah. or he's still very blown up, but yeah. you were saying that you had Dan's number and yeah. Andrew's number yeah. at the like same time when they both didn't like like kind of converse with each other. Yet. Yeah, they had never met each other. So Dan had invited me over to uh, Bulzarian invited me over to his house to play paintball, 
And uh, I was going to come over there and I said, hey, man, have you ever heard of Andrew Tate? And he's like, no, I never heard of Andrew Tate. And it, it, it's true. Like Andrew was big. It was really weird because Andrew and I had been talking for over a year. And every week we'd talk and he'd have another 500,000 followers on Instagram. I'm like, dude, how are you doing this? Everyone's yeah. tripping over what he did on TikTok and YouTube. I only knew him from, from Instagram. By the oh, way, wow. I'm going to say this for the 50th time. He violated zero terms of service on Instagram. One more time. If anybody on Instagram wants to call me out on this, he violated zero terms of service on Instagram. He was canceled from Instagram for, vi for violating zero terms of service. And so they took him off the platform. Uh, and then, you know, we had already exchanged phone numbers. So we, you know, we texted back. I actually talked to him yesterday. He's like, uh, he told me he's not coming back to the States. So I got to go to Romania oh, to shit. interview him. Uh, we may do something on Zoom. I'm not sure, but. But it's just one of these situations where, like, here's the thing. Do I agree with everything he says, especially with the statements? No. And neither does Rolo, and neither does neither does Tristan. Tristan I straight up said, he said, I don't speak for Andrew. Andrew doesn't speak for me. A function of masculinity, like when you had uh, Justin on here, is that we can be individuals. We can be the, the cowboy in Wyoming, and we can be the broker on Wall Street. And we don't dislike each other because we're different. Yeah. We can be the, uh, we can be the, uh, the Arkansas Razorback fan, and we can be the Alabama Crimson Tide fan, and we can be the UT Austin fan, and we don't hate each other because we have different opinions. Non-masculinity is about a, a group think. It's about one type of thinking, and anybody who steps away from that group think you snitch on him. So like right. we snitch on Andrew Tate. We snitch on people when they don't or when they don't use the correct pronouns on Twitter, and then we take their accounts away. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that that essentially is the, the individualism of that of that type of belief is what it is. It's not about hating anyone. It's about the fact that we can be individuals and still get along as people. So I mean that was that was just one of the things that I uh, you know I saw with Andrew is that you know he had a. a a similar mindset to Dan. I knew, I knew they weren't going to agree on certain things. Yeah. Uh, and then I think, I can't remember if Andrew reached out to Dan or Dan reached out to Andrew. They started talking to each other. Uh, he talked, Dan talked about it on his London real interview where he had started reaching out to, uh, or Andrew had reached out to him. And the other thing that I found was so disingenuous. So you saw Jake Paul and, and Andrew Tater talking about doing or fighting, right? Yeah. And Logan Paul had the audacity to go on TV and be like, I'm not sure if I want to replatform him. And I'm like, bro, weren't you canceled for going into a forest where somebody had just committed suicide yeah. and then KSI decided to fight you to replatform you, but you're too good to replatform uh, Andrew. Yeah. But, but your brother had no problem doing it. It's, to me, it was like, and by the way, the other part was yes. Uh, uh, Logan and, and uh, Logan and Jake hundred percent were inviting Andrew Tate to come out and party with them in Los Angeles before he was canceled. And then all of a sudden it wasn't cool to be friends with them anymore. Cause they say they don't or they didn't. Yeah, they, they absolutely did. And they, listen, dude, I don't, I, I just like this one I'm talking about being a, like, uh, again, I like Logan and, uh, uh, and Jake. I've met them twice. I don't like know them super well, but like this whole thing where it's like all of a sudden this person's not cool because he has a different different agreement or your manager tells you that this person's not cool anymore, you will never see me do that shit. Yeah. No. And, and by the way, I, and to, a de to my own detriment, I go back to East Dallas sometimes and I hang out with dudes who I know are crack dealers that I grew up with. I'll still hang out with them. I'll still say what's up to them. I don't go sell crack with them. But yeah. like, I'm not going to sit there and sell somebody out just because somebody else told me that they were bad. Bro, to me, that was like, and then, and then just to prove a point, J uh, Andrew said Jake and Logan are not as close as Tristan and I. Well, it turns out that's true because yeah. Jake is now going to fight him, and Logan said he wasn't going to. So, yeah. you know, I just thought that part was interesting. I mean, again, I'm not I'm not trying to call out Jake and Logan. They're very nice people. They've been very hospitable to me in the you know couple times that I met them. But uh, it's just one of these situations where it's like it's. I felt like it was a bit hypocritical. I felt like it was a bit hypocritical for him to say, I, I'm not sure if I want to replatform this guy. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. You don't want to replatform this guy. They were willing to lie about him being a human trafficker. Dude. And yeah, you found that that was okay. But, but let me say one more time. They lied about him being a human trafficker. Yeah. The girl walked outside, grabbed a pizza, walked back inside. The police never charged him anything. And people were saying ad hoc, ad hominem, this motherfucker was a human <laughs> trafficker. Like, I, let me just ask you a question. Like, why do you think the other side would be willing to go to the point of like lying about felonies yeah. in order to discredit this person? Because they don't like his message. Because they're afraid of his message. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100%. Again, I don't. I don't agree with everything he has to say. Like, but but the, the the point is, why would you do that unless you are super insecure? And let me one one more thing. We can. I don't want to talk about Andrew Tate the whole all time. Good, but, all good. but the last thing is. Andrew Tate was not canceled because of misogynistic statements. Please let me say it one more time. Not canceled because of misogynistic statements. If you believe he is, please go look at the grand ma or uh, the the ultimate supreme leader of Iran. Okay, the Ayatollah of Iran. He says way more misogynistic stuff than Andrew Tate ever did. Anti-Semitic stuff. And they in that country they kill people for being homosexual. He still has a Twitter. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. He still has Twitter. No, the reason why Andrew Tate got canceled is because he figured out the YouTube algorithm. He figured out the algorithm by using affiliates. He grew too fast. And I think these platforms were afraid of like a political candidate doing something similar to what he did. And that's the reason why he was canceled. That's actually why he was canceled. It was not because of the misogynistic statement. Nobody's more misogynistic than Instagram. There's no way that that was the reason why he was canceled. <laughs> Dude, that's so true. I didn't even think yeah. about it that way. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, I appreciate you diving into yeah. that. But, um, you know, for people that don't know you, like I know you from um, obviously like TikTok and stuff like that, but you're the, your business is called Men of Action, yeah. right? You help men become high status, uh, high status men. Yeah. Right? Do we, by the way, we, there's 11 women in the, in the program too. Wow. Yes. Okay. Walk me through that. There's because two, there's two, uh, two or three gay guys, I think, homosexual men that we have in the program too. Uh, it's not it, men of action is a misnomer. It's just okay. a problem is 99%. It's, it's a marketing thing. 99% of self-help is men. It just is yeah. like if I tried to make a program specifically for women for self-help, you just don't do well. I can right. show you myriad of examples. I wish it wasn't like that, but that's how it is. A few of my, uh, the girls who come on that are big models. So some of them, uh, you know, one of the things we talk about is, um, uh, creating events. That's one of the 11 pillars we talk about creating events. And so I'll have some like really, really big models come on and be like, okay, in order for you to get invited to this event, what are the steps that would it would take for you to sit, to respond to this? And we go over that. And so they, they sit there and they, they explain, well, I would respond to you, but not you because you look like a child molester on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, 90% of the gentlemen who are watching this, you look like a child molester on your Instagram. You do look like a human trafficker. I know you don't think you do, but those weird pictures of you in a flannel shirt that are blurry with your dog or you're at a fucking college football game or whatever, those weird photos that you have or the, the close-up and then followed by a close-up and then another close This is not a yeah. grinder profile, bro. I don't <laughs> understand like how people still at this point get men especially get it so wrong when it comes to Instagram. And that's the thing. We would go, we sit there and we'd help them fix their Instagram. So the first four rules is front one fix your Instagram or the first four steps is one fix your Instagram. Two, you have to build a list, like a dream list of people that you want to network with. Three, you have to find six events that you can take people to, or at least invite people to. Like for instance, uh, Ulysses, if you were like not here, uh, if you were not in Los Angeles during the Maxim party, I still have a guest list. So if there were like a bunch of girls that you knew that you thought were really attractive, you wanted them to go to the Maxim party, I can get them on the list. You will still get credit even though you didn't show up. Yeah. And you'll have open threads with huge models because of this. And then sick. And then the uh, step number four is find six females that will go to you with, with you to these events, like teammates, not girls that you're dating, but just right. like teammates. And so those are like the first four steps in that part of it. But we also teach a leadership component because I'm a former U.S. military officer. And we teach an entrepreneurship component, specifically dealing with how people waste their time. Yeah. Multitasking is a myth, for instance. We, we recommend the book, uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, we talk about leadership components from Crucial Conversations, Start With Why, different books like that that we go over. I also recommend bo the, the book, uh, the, the Operator by Robert O'Neill. Uh, and also we have an evolutionary psychology pillar where I actually recommend all of Dr. David Buss's books, like when men behave badly. And, um, another book, one of the best books I've ever read is called, uh, the ape that understood the universe by Dr. David, uh, by Dr. Uh, Stephen Stewart. Oh gosh, I can't remember what his last name is. Stephen Stewart Williams. And, uh, I recommend all these books, but the, you want to know the one of the best books ever on evolutionary psychology. That's Nobody right. will believe me. It's the setup by Dan Bilzerian. That is one of the best books ever written on evolutionary psychology. Yeah. He doesn't recommend. He doesn't. He doesn't talk about evolutionary psychology in the book. He does uh, quote B. F. Skinner at one point, but the book is a, a perfect example of how evolutionary psychology, when put into practice, actually works. So my interview with Dan Bilzerian is part of the curriculum for the Men of Action program. Yeah. And because we talk about status is status is status. One of the problems that a lot of guys have is they're like, well, Michael, I need good guy status. I need U.S. Senator status. I need the, because there used to be, I'd say in 1985, there was a good guy status, Ronald Reagan, and a bad guy status, Mikhail Gorbachev. They both were famous and infamous, but they weren't the same. We saw one guy as the good, one guy was uh, Hulk Hogan and the other guy was the Iron Sheik, right? There was good guy status and bad guy status. That doesn't exist anymore. You want to yeah. know how I know? Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort went to prison for 15 months for a securities fraud, and oh, yeah. now we, we're just crawling all over, over ourselves to buy his next product. Yep. Okay? Uh, you know, we, we don't care about that stuff. I, I just mentioned the thing about Logan Paul getting canceled, and now, uh, now he's the biggest male influencer in the world. He or Bulzarian, like the biggest male influencer in the world. Uh, you know, uh, we can, I mean, there's a myriad of other guys we can, but I went to a party the other day on my life. I got a picture of it on my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I, I look around the party. It was at my friend. He's an attorney at his office and there's all these white women just surrounded this one table. So I go, I was like, what is this sea of white <laughs> going through the sea of white women on my life? Orenthal James Simpson, OJ Simpson is right there. And all these blonde women are like surrounding him. Wait,
wait a second, but I thought nobody would fuck with him anymore. He, you know how many people are making TikToks with OJ Simpson right now? It's a madness, bro. And and then I then you know you know the other one I bring up is like you know when when uh, Bruce Jenner transitioned to Caitlyn Jenner, she you know she killed somebody, right? She ran somebody. She was driving an ATV, yeah, hit him in the back, ran him uh, into the opposite traffic, killed the person, then ran into another person after that. She apparently wasn't tested to see if she was drunk, and then one woman of the year four months later. Oh yes, yeah, woman that. of the year. Four months later, I'm again. I'm not trying to shame anybody. My point is, status is status is status. You live in a country where your president was fucking a porn star, right? While his <laughs> wife was pregnant and still yeah. got elected, but you're worried about good guy status or bad guy status. One of the points I made, I did an interview the other day for like a uh, a big news media organization. They're like, "What's the line between infamy and fame?" And there is no. There was a line in 1985. In 2022, there is no line between being infamous and being famous, none whatsoever. I can't tell you how many girls hit me up and they're like, I hate Andrew Tate. Do you have his phone number? Like, it's like, it's, you know what I'm saying? At the same time, do you, what, is he single? <laughs> yeah. I hate that motherfucker. Is he single? It, do you know what it, kind of girl he likes? It's like that. It's, it's just, it's so crazy to me whenever I see this. So like, I tell people like you really, unless you work at a top secret laboratory, you have a top secret government clearance, or you work in some line of work where you can't post anything lascivious or funny. Yeah. If you're not, you are invisible. Nobody cares about what you're doing whatsoever. Like you have to post something crazy, like not crazy, but attention grabbing very quickly because that's the way the world works. That's how business is done now. Yeah. And why do these men like, uh, you know, at least the people that are buying your stuff, what do they crave the most? Cause, cause what yeah. you sell is like a, a lifestyle basically. Yeah. What do they crave the most? Uh, I, I mean, I think there's the most, I mean, in general, if you read the last chapter of the book, uh, think and grow rich, uh, Napoleon Hill talks about sexual motivation. Uh, Dr. David Buss talks about higher, uh, higher status, sexual selection, stuff like that. I think men and women are both looking for higher sexual selection and they're all looking for higher status. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, if you go through, you know, any, Steve Jobs dated multiple uh, models. You know, you see uh, what you know, what's his face, um, Jeff Bezos. You know, left his wife for another yeah. woman. Yeah, you know, he had all his money. Uh, you know, say the same same thing. Like people are always looking for higher, higher sexual selection. Obviously, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elon Musk is on kid number eleven now, or something like that. You know, it's just it's one of these things where we're looking for higher sexual selection and higher status. And uh, when the men generally, what they're looking for is a. a an ability to gain access to different things and, and to gain some notoriety and credibility from their network and their status. Yeah. And then obviously because of my marketing, there are so many fantastically attractive women in it. They're looking to help themselves with their dating life. One of the things I don't do, however, is have guys come into my program and it's just a dating program. I'm not interested in that. If that's what you're going to do, you're going to come into my program and be very disappointed because one of the things is we have to build you up from the bottom up. So yeah. that means there has to be something to do with your the gymnasium. We, we got to go to the gym. We got to fix your physique. We have to, like, I can't, I'm not going to deal with these dudes who are like, Michael, I want to trick these women into dating me while you're sleeping on your mom's couch. Cause that's what pickup did for years. The pickup yeah. artist community, it was like, Hey, I'm sleeping on my mom's couch. What words can I say to get these girls right. to come home with me? And my whole thing is like, why would you ever tell somebody you live on your mom's couch? Get off your mom's couch. Let's figure it. Let's learn how to be a copywriter. Let's learn how to do high ticket sales. Let's learn, learn how to build a sales funnel. Let's learn like so many different things. Let's learn how to become an affiliate. Yeah. Look at all these things you can do from home without a college degree in order to make money. There's so many ways to make money. That's what Hustle University was, uh, you know, with, with Justin Waller, what he was talking about. They were teaching you so many different ways to make money. And so that, that whole thing, like that has to be part of the improvement. One of the most underrated parts of, of male improvement is logistics. This is a part, man, I'm telling you, you guys who live out in Des Moines, Iowa, Secaucus, New Jersey, and Cheyenne, Wyoming, and you're like, Michael, how do I date the three playmates? And I'm like, pimp, you don't. You got to move. And they yeah. don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear, hey, I had a, uh, one of my clients, he, he has like all these designs in this like huge social circle. And I'm like, you live in Minneapolis, bro. What am I supposed to do? They're, they're going to come see you in the winter? But right. they don't want to hear that. Yeah. You know, because oh, what the, the other thing is high status men normally distribute. Any city you pick in like Lima, Peru, there's a cardiologist somewhere in Lima, Peru, who probably makes two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Somewhere in uh, Waco, Texas, there's an injury attorney who makes maybe clears a million a year. High status men normally distribute across the United States, across the world. High status women do not. They right. they move to Miami. They go to Miami Swim Week. They go to Ibiza in the summers. They go to uh, Jamaica in the winters. They go to Los Angeles for this party. They go to uh, uh, Austin, Texas. They're going to be there. You know, they went to the F1 race for Austin, Texas. They're going to be at the F1 race here in Las Vegas. They're going to be at 
to EDC. They're going to be EDC. That's what they're going to do. Attractive women do not normally distribute. When, yeah. they're, when they're attractive and they live in Waco, the minute they turn 18, they take their ass out of there. Unless they're going to Wichita State, they get their ass out of uh, uh, Kansas in two seconds. Right. And so, like, that's the thing you have to explain to these men, and they don't want to hear it. They really Dude, don't want to hear it. You give uh, tough love. I, actually, one of the videos that I saw. Um, Billy. Probably, was it? Yeah, Where, my man you're Billy. You're like, dude, like, it's literally right in front of you, yeah. and you did, just did not understand, you yeah. know? Yeah, the, the problem is the simple answer. The one standard deviation move is is generally the answer to a lot of your problems, and people don't like to hear that. They're like, you know, uh, they, they read books like, uh, you know, uh, Never Eat Alone is a great book. I'm not criticizing the book, but I'm like, have you read How to Win Friends and Influence People? It's like, ah, that's old. Yeah. That's old. That's old. That Your species is old. Your species is 300,000 years old. All your proclivities are based on, on natural selection. What do you mean it's old? That means it's, if it's old, guess what? That means it worked. Yeah. That's why it's old, <laughs> pimp. That's why you're still reading it because it worked. Yeah. That's why. And they, people don't want to hear that. They don't like the, the, the old school answer of why, of why things work. The other thing is, this is another one. It's not controversial, but it's obvious. Networking is a, is a natural, is an adaptation, is a, an a, uh, evolutionary adaptation. Obviously, it's an evolutionary adaptation. People think, you know, it, it's normal for people to come together, for men to come together as a team and accomplish a goal. Yeah. And when you do that, like last night, a buddy of mine, he's incredibly successful. This guy, you know, he clears $30 million a year in revenue with his, his sales team. And I was talking to him, and we were just coming up with ideas on how we can work together. Justin Waller came on my podcast, super controversial. He said, yo, man, if we can't make money together, I don't want to be your fucking friend. Yeah. That's what he said, and it, yeah. bo it bothered a lot of people when he said that. And that's the thing, man. Like the, the greatest feeling for me is to accomplish massive goal, to raise two, three hundred thousand dollars for charity with a bunch of people that we I work together with as a team. I teach you how to work together as a team, and that's the thing. A lot of people, like of course, it's very easy to look at my 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 marketing and be like, oh, this guy does teach you how to meet a bunch of hot girls, and you will obviously meet a ton of hot girls if you take my program. But the the that is not the main point. The main point is to fix. Uh, like you become this leader in your society that helps with so many different things. <clears throat> and, and I just like, I, I do not, I'm not trying to do fake it till you make it. I actually want to change you as a person and understand that when you create win-win situ situations for other people, just to cre imagine a life where every single person you interact with in your entire life, you create these amazing win-win situations. Nothing bad happens. Your life is just amazing. You get invited to everything. Everyone want to hang, hang out. Everyone wants to hang out with you. People invite you on their podcasts. Your, your business grows exponentially because you actually put passion and love and thought into what, the, the product that you're selling. Man, do you, do you understand just not being a scam artist, how much money you can make? Right now in 2022, just not being, just not being FTX. Yeah. Just yeah. not being a scam artist. Just being able to provide the shit you say that you can provide. Just doing that makes you different. By the way, just not being creepy makes you different with women because most dudes are creepy as shit. Let me tell you one more time. Let me look here right here in your camera. Most dudes are creepy to women. Most attractive women see dudes and they're like, man, this guy is creepy as shit. And that's the, that's the problem. And so you actually have to do things to work against that. And I mean, we can go into the whole reason why that is, but that mainly has to do with social media. Social media has made, so there is one global dating marketplace, whereas before there used to be a Waco marketplace, a Waco, Waco dating and Dallas dating and San Antonio dating. Yeah. It used to be, you know, Las Vegas dating and Los Angeles dating and San Francisco dating. Now it's just one dating thing. All, every girl, like, again, I was hanging out. I had a friend of mine named Jojo Von South. He lived in uh, Wichita, Kansas, and she was at the same, she was at the same, I'd lost touch with her. And then I end up at the, at Dan Bilzerian's party, the Ignite party, and there she is. Well, how did, how the fuck she get from, she was at Waco. How was she in Waco, Te or uh, Wichita, Kansas? How was she at Bilzerian? Because there's one marketplace now. Because yeah. social media made it so that we, instead of bifurcating into these different marketplaces, we are now unified. We've coagulated into one dating marketplace. So now the men you're competing with are these same men at the top. And so if you don't have any social media going for you, it's not that you have a disadvantage. You don't exist. You don't exist. Right. And so that's the, that's the reason why I, I tell guys, that's why I teach guys how to fix this part of their life and why I explain to them that it's so incredibly important. Yeah. Well, why do you think they, they just don't make it a priority or what? No, it's just because, because they think it's silly. That, like, dude, I'm a 45 year old man. You think I want to put these fucking stupid dog filters on my face? No, I don't want to do it, but it works. Yeah, it works. That's why I do it. Yeah. And so because I keep because I do it and it works, that's that's the reason why. Like, again, I remember when when uh, I, I said something crazy on my Instagram, I can't remember what it was, and I got a bunch of flack for it. And I remember like being bummed about it. And that was the first seven six figure month. I remember Cole Gordon, not Cole Gordon, um, uh, Grant Cardone. He was talking to. Uh, uh, Cole Gordon and he was talking to Brad Lee about this I think and he was like the months where we started making the most money was when we got the most hate yeah okay 
that that was the reason once i saw oh so if i say this crazy thing then i make more money okay fuck it i don't care anymore that's essentially what happened that, right. that's the way it worked for me like what would you be willing to say for 10 million dollars a month yeah you understand yeah. what i'm saying what would you 100%. be willing but like, by the way anybody out there who's like no nah, i would never say anything that i just you're a liar you for 10 million dollars a month you would say some crazy but, but of course they're aliens i saw some aliens yesterday <laughs> yeah, yeah let me tell you let me tell you something about these reptile people that live underneath antarctica you'd be willing to say anything for 10 million dollars a month yeah. so i uh, you know i see people do this and then you know it's just it's just really interesting um the motivations on social media are just so crazy. And I do think things get out, out of control, but the idea that we're going to erase it or believe something different is going to happen. Like the idea that like attention spans are going to expand. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And the idea that when I talk to these guys in like the manosphere, this belief that like all of a sudden things are going to swing back to like a more traditional family roles and people are going to want to get married again. You're being delusional. It's not going to swing back. Yeah. I only deal with things the way they are and not the way that the things I want them to be. That's what evolutionary psychology is. It is a study about what is and not what ought. And that is very difficult for people to believe. And they also believe that because I study these things, therefore I encourage them or endorse them. It's mm. like saying, because I'm an oncologist, I endorse cancer. No, I study cancer. That doesn't mean I endorse it. Yeah. Humans are a very, very violent species. If you don't believe me, go watch that, that new show came out on uh, Netflix. Go watch uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. Fantastic. One of my favorite books of all time. Uh, they turned it into a movie. The incredible amount of violence and pain that humans have inflicted on each other over the last 3,000 years is just, uh, just incredible, or 11,000 years since the agricultural revolution is unbelievable. This belief that you think that we're just naturally peaceful. No, we're not. This is a very chaotic, extremely violent, jealous uh, culture that we belong to. Another book I'd recommend is The Murderer Next Door by Dr. David Buss. It is recently because our needs are met, because you and I are going to have three square meals today. We're going to be underneath a roof. We're not going to sleep out on the streets, whatever. For the most part, our biological needs are going to be, be met. That's the reason why we don't resort to violence anymore. Yeah. This re society has created that for us. But the reality of the situation is we, come, we're hair, we are hairless murder apes. That's what we are. And the people don't like that idea, but they're every single possible thing that we can possibly come up with clearly shows that that is the case, that we are hairless murder rapes and that bothers people a lot. So that, that's the, that's the issue. Um, they, people want to believe that we were just born good. We'll always be good. And that's the way it is. And it's just every, every possible piece of evidence shows opposite every piece dude, the incredible amount of violence that's shown in the anthropological anthropological record is horrible. And people are like, yes, but we can overcome that. Yeah, that's the point. But how do we overcome it? We learn from it. Yeah. We learn from it. We study it. Yeah. Dude, you know what's crazy? It's like <clears throat> I've never kind of stopped to think about a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, but it just sounds and rings so fucking true. You know, the fact that we're like a violent species, the, fi the fact that like, hey, you're not looking at things that, you know, what you would like them to be. You're basically just kind of like right now you're teaching a lot of men to, to have that social status because of what is right now, not yeah. necessarily what, you know, back then. And you're right. I don't think we're going back to the tr traditional sense of like, Hey, marriage and, you know, continuous, uh, continuing that way. And do you feel like we're kind of moving incredibly fast? Um, with like, you know, so, so you remember, you know how people say, what's the problem, right? What's the problem? Well, how are we going to fix this marriage problem? People aren't having kids. You see Elon Musk is like, we yeah. gotta have more kids. It's a problem. Yeah. Last time I checked, there's 7.7 .7 billion humans on the planet and four 400,000 elephants. It Damn. sounds like we won. Yeah. There's no, ain't no, no more problem. There's a problem <laughs> there's a, when there's 60,000 humans on the planet, then we have a problem. Right. We could have, we could wipe, we could lose half the earth's population. I don't, is it a problem? Yeah, it's a problem for the people who died. But it's not, a, it, in general, for the species, it's not a problem. We've done pretty, we pretty well as far as taking over the entire planet. Too well. Yeah. We've done too well at taking over the entire planet. So the thing is, one of the issues that have, you're saying, like, do things go fast? From a, a, an evolutionary biology standpoint, very slow. Uh, very slow. Almost because we're the apex predator on the planet, there's not much, uh, there's no, what's it, evolutionary pressure for us to continue most of us that that are alive right now we would die very quickly in the in the uh ancestral past yeah. we don't know how to hunt we don't know how to find water we don't know we don't have any of these skill sets we also don't have the toughnesses in our skin and the calluses of our hands to be able to function and live in that type of society we don't and those people lived hard brutal lives and died in their 20s that's essentially what happened and those are our, those are our ancestors right there's 110 billion humans that ever lived on the planet there's only seven billion of them that are alive today so when you when you come to this realization about how hard it was and, and the reality, one of the things that you, one of the rough realizations you come to is that every single belief that you have and every single preference that you have has to come from natural selection. 
And if it does come from natural selection, then that kind of c c puts into question, is there such thing as free will? I don't think there is free will. I can pretty much prove there is no such thing as free will. Yeah. The idea that you have free will, no, you have a choice between chocolate and vanilla ice cream, not chocolate and poop. Yeah, right. If you had free will, then it would be poop. Let's go eat sulfur. Let's go jump off of a fucking cliff. You don't have free will. You absolutely do not have free will. It's a. It's so. Anytime we have a conversation about this, I can like prove to you. It's like, oh yeah, but I chose my to dye my hair blonde instead of purple. It's like yeah, but you because those are different things that when women do that, those are different things that men find attractive. That's why you chose blonde right. or purple or whatever. Now go back to your thing. Is is it going too fast? Evolutionary biology, no. From a cultural standpoint, we are going incredibly fast. And yeah. what we, what's the answer for this, the term for this is called evolutionary mismatch. We are not created from an evolutionary standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, to deal with the the life that we're living right now. We, things are going way too fast. Like what, the, the idea, there's called, what's called Dunbar's number. It means in your life, you're supposed to have about 150 people in your mind. And by, by the way, if you look at military units, military units are about 150 people. Mm. But in, on my Instagram, if I have thou, a thousand people, and most people, a lot of people have a thousand yeah. followers on Instagram, a thousand people, you can't keep up with a thousand people in your mind. Well, 10,000, 50,000, a million, you can't keep up with this number of people. And what happens is uh, you start to believe that the best things you see on Instagram are, are you need those best things. You need that Bugatti. Right. Yep. You need to date that girl who's a perfect 10. You need to date all these things. And so now you start feeling FOMO and you're not. You're not set up for this. Your ancestors grew up in a time without social media. The hottest girl was the hottest girl on their block. Right. Not the hottest girl in Miami when they live in my in Las Vegas. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so this is where the evolutionary mismatch comes from. It's like you're you're not you weren't supposed to know about all these things. And now it just gets incredibly confusing. You see people, you know, have very short attention spans, very low amounts of patient amounts of patience. And um and they start desiring things that they, they can't have and they start to become extremely depressed. That's why I tell people one of the rules in Men of Action is we are social, me we are social media producers, we are not social media consumers. Yeah. We're social media producers, we're not social media consumers. If you ever feel sad about what you see on social media, that means you didn't produce something today. Don't watch anymore. I catch myself whenever I'm flipping through stuff, I'm like, mm, nope, not doing this. I'm not flipping through anything. I'm not flipping through anything today. I just lost all my audio. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. No, sorry, I can hear yeah, you. the microphone <clears throat> or the uh, headphones. So, um, yeah, so of course it's going too fast. Yeah, everything. And by the way, it'll, it'll go faster because uh, there's a great book by Rick Kurzweil called The Singularity is Near. And one of the things they talk about in the book is once artificial intelligence gets to 1.0 human brain, right? Right now, artificial intelligence, let's just say it's 0.2, like two-tenths of a human brain right now as far as its pattern recognition and its ability to like, uh, you know, interpret different things and read facial expressions. Let's say it's like 20%. Once we get to the point that it's at 100%, it's like 1.0, the next, it doesn't go 99%, 1, 1%. It goes 99%, 1.0, and then it's 10.0. Oh, fuck. Then it's 100.0. Then it's 10,000.0. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because for artificial intelligence, the feedback loop is in so incredibly fast compared to a homo sapien that once we pass that point where it's exactly as smart as a human brain, we can never go back. The point of being able to never go back, we talk about this in physics, it's called a singularity. Like a singularity would be like the point uh, or the event horizon in... Um, um, in uh, astrophysics with a black hole, once you go past that point, you can light cannot escape and you go to a singularity, which is like this point of no return. The singularity that happens with artificial intelligence is the point of no return. Whereas uh, is sing uh, artificial intelligence gets to the same intelligence as a brain. We can never go back. We will get to that point. And at that point, things will go so fast that we, but here's the problem. We won't be in charge anymore. We simply won't be in charge anymore. And you know, uh, uh, with Elon Musk talks about this. You all know her. Arari talks about this. Several other people talk about this. Artificial intelligence will it will it be good or bad? I don't know if it'll be good or bad. What I do know is that it will be in control. Yeah. This idea that we're like as lazy as people are now. If you guys really took a, took a step back and just realized how much you need other people in order to live your life, when you buy things on Amazon Fresh and you're like, oh man, I'm a tough, robust person. Hey, how was your Amazon Fresh order that you got in six hours? It was delivered to your place. Trust me. We, we realize how much you are dependent on technology for your life. And then I'll start to understand technology is also all going to be run by machine learning. Yeah. It's going to be a problem, man. And here's the thing. When the artificial intelligence starts providing you a better life than your government did, 
you aren't going to complain. You're right. just going to sit there and let it happen. That's, sure. that's essentially what's going to happen. I mean, we could go even further down the rabbit hole. Like once we start creating androids that look like humans, people will stop dating. Wow. You're going to see the gender start bifurcating. You're going to start seeing women like mashing alleles together and creating children without men. You're going to see all this stuff happen. It will happen. Yeah. Well, you and I will probably be dead. <clears throat> the only thing is, listen, Grandpa, Sart Grandpa Sartain wants to make it up to the moon. That's the only thing I want to do before I die. If I can make it up there, that'd be good. Dude, that, yeah, that'd be fucking yeah. insane. <clears throat> Um, in terms of like your day to day, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's fucking, um, you know, completely different than what it was. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming like 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. Um, how, how, like a lot of people that look up to you, they want to have your type of lifestyle. Yeah. I don't think they know it completely. So yeah. like, how does it, cause you just told me like, dude, I fell asleep like at 5 a.m. I can't yeah. do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm like 25, you know? <laughs> Shout out to excess. Yeah. Uh, so we went on stage uh, for Marshmallow last night. And then afterwards we got invited up to his suite. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you get up and invited into the DJ suite, there's a lot of great parts. But nothing greater than the fact that they cater it. Oh, there was so much good food in there. Yeah. Bro, I was eating like the chimichangas and the, the bro, I was so, oh, so good. Uh, so no, I, was up, I was up pretty late last night. The thing is for me, uh, I generally go to bed at uh, 5 a.m. Uh, and I go, I wake up around 10 or 10 or 11. Sometimes I go four to 10, somewhere around there. Holy fuck. Yeah. Dude. And the reason why is because when people come visit me in Las Vegas, it doesn't screw up my schedule. Right. I go to the gym usually around 11 PM or midnight. So for me, the, the, the here's the main thing that, cause most people are not going to take up my schedule. I don't blame you. Yeah. I, I used to fly special ops in the air force and we, we would get to work at 10 PM and we get back at 6 AM from a mission in Afghanistan. That was just what I was used to. I was very productive in that role as an Air Force navigator. So I just continued that once I got out of the military. Um, I will tell you uh, uh, checklists, which comes from a flyer. Any, any guy out there who's flown airplanes, you know, it's checklist discipline. Yeah, I could have the entire checklist memorized, but I still put the checklist on my lap and I follow the checklist. Yeah. And uh, alarms, those are the two things, checklists and alarms. Those are probably the two things that have helped me the most is that whenever I have a free second, I go back to my to-do list and I'm like, and I reorganize it based on priority and it's by immediacy. So for instance, I, there's a book, it's called by Mihai Chesesmihai called Flow. And one of the things they talk about is clarity of goals. And the other, uh, so I, my, my to-do list is literally called clarity of goals. Yeah. So I, I go in the, there and I'll put the first most important thing that I have to do. Like I put, I put this podcast on there today. And then I, I set, I, yeah, of course, and I, I set my checklists based on these things that I have to get accomplished before. So I'm about to take a trip home for Thanksgiving. And I'm doing the a podcast and two to two podcasts in Dallas. And then I go and I'm hosting a charity event in San Diego called the Teddy Ball, where we could we collect uh, teddy bears, stuffed animals for, for, for children. And then I go to Miami, I'm doing a fresh and fit podcast and I'm doing a value tainment podcast. Yep. And then but before that, I go do the babes in Toyland charity event for the midnight mission where we're collecting toys for homeless children in Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, all these things, if you, if I were to think of them all at once, my brain would melt. Oh, not to mention, obviously my podcast every week, my two uh, live streams I do every week, all the podcasts I get invited on every week. Yep. And then, then the fact that I run men of action, we put 11 hours of new content in men of action every week. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So uh, 11 hours. Cause I do three, three hour, I do three, two and a half hour group calls per week yeah. plus the three hour podcast. And every other week I do a Monday live stream that I do on YouTube. And that's for people who like don't buy the program. Cause right, I understand right. my program's expensive. I get it. Uh, for people who don't buy the program, they get to come on the live stream and then just like do Q and a with me for three hours. I don't come, I don't get off the live stream until every question is answered. So I do all of those things every week. And so like, how do I, if I were to think of all those things at the same time, I would have a panic attack. Dude, forget thinking of them. You're, you're doing them yeah. on a day to day but, basis. But I would, like, I would have a, if I considered all the things I do every day, I would have a panic attack. Yeah. But if I take them, here's the trick. Instead of having that anxiety, that panic attack, you just write it down on your ch checklist and then you go back later and then you reorder. This is how I do also with my Q and A's. Uh, I have a, I'm, I'm interviewing this girl tomorrow for my, for my podcast. I come up with 75 questions for her. Then I reorder the questions based on um, like the level of importance. Yeah. And that's why people who come on my podcast without fail always say that I have the most detailed podcast of anybody because of yeah. all the questions. I do so much research. I do at least eight hours of research on each on each guest. And you read a lot, dude. Every like this whole podcast is like yeah. every five minutes there's a book that you've read yeah. from this doctor, I, this I person. I try to do. So when I was in the military, I could get through 60 books a year. Now I can get through maybe 25. And the reason why I can only get through 25 now is because um, because I have to study for my podcast guests. Yeah, that takes up a lot of time. My gym time, by the way, I do not listen to music anymore. I listen to uh, podcasts, uh, audiobooks, or classes online that help me build my business, or they are research for my guests. Yeah, 
Uh, I know this is what a, man, a lot of people hate this one, man, but you got to turn the music off in the car when you're eating or when you're in the gym. That has that time has to be reserved for listening to things that help you become productive and get ready for it at double speed. Yeah. If you oh, can't wow. make double speed, try 1.75, but you need to try for double speed. Yeah. You, when you start doing that and you start taking notes and then you stick with the checklist, discipline, the discipline, the um, checklist and alarms, you find just incredible levels of productivity. And then that's why I have three jobs. I'm a, uh, I am currently a quantitative analyst at a hedge fund, but we're not a hedge fund yet. Well, I don't want to say that we're a, we're a financial firm, but we're not a hedge fund yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm a quantitative analyst for a fund uh, out of Florida called Continental Financial Capital. I am a, um, I have my podcast and then I have the men of action program on yeah. top of the fact that I host all the bikini pageants in Las Vegas. I host, you know, swimsuit USA in Mexico. And then I also host, um, paradise challenge in Jamaica. Then I also host, uh, babes in Toyland smash global. I host the model citizen fund and I host all the Teatro parties in Los Angeles. Well, I do all those things. If I were to think about all that at once, I'd be like, fuck man, that is so overwhelming but it's not overwhelming when you put it on a checklist and you're like okay let me reorder what do i have to do today and only focus on one thing at a time put four hour blocks to fig finish that one thing best book i've ever read on productivity is the one thing by gary keller yeah and you do that and man i'm, I'm telling you the things you can get through in your life are 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 legion yeah you also lose a lot of patience for people who waste your time that happens right. very quickly that thing happens. No disrespect. I know there's probably 10 people who are watching this right now. You probably hit me up this week and like, hey, Michael, let's go grab coffee. And I'm like, pimp, I don't have time to grab coffee. I just don't have time to grab coffee. It's yeah. not that I'm so busy and overwhelmed. It's just that my every second of my day is planned out. Right. And you know what? I'm going to watch the Dallas Cowboys too. That's why I plan that out on my week. My, I'm going to watch the Texas Longhorns every week too. That's that's part of my my weekly routine as well. So that's I mean, that's the answer. It's checklists and alarms. That's probably the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, you also know how to like put people in place because if you're doing three different, completely uh, yeah. different things, like men of action has to run by itself without you. If you're doing all of this other stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Grant, so I have two partners, Grant and uh, Miguel, and like they are, you know, they're so important uh, to, to the way the program works where they can just let me do the thing I do really well. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the offensive line has to block so that the quarterback can plant his feet and throw the football accurately. Yeah. And it's this type of situation. They don't make me do other things. They just let me create content and do fulfillment because those are the things I'm good at. And those yep. are the things I love. I'm also kind of like, kind of like the, uh, sort of the, I'm obviously I'm the face of the program, but I'm also like the ambassador. Like I go out, sometimes they're like, Hey man, we want to learn sales from this guy or we want to learn copywriting from this guy i'm like all right cool i have him on my podcast <laughs> or hey i have a bikini competition i'm gonna invite him to uh, to be a judge at the bikini competition yeah. and then we make connections with people that normally we wouldn't be able to make connections with on because of that basis that's how justin waller justin waller was a judge at the playboy bikini competition at wet republic that's yeah. how we first that's the first way we met right and then he introduced me to rollo tomasi and both of them were introduced to me by andrew andrew tate met, introduced me to justin waller so like that's that's how that whole thing happened. I I teach networking while networking. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I teach networking while networking. I did a, a section on how to network with with high status people the week the Bulzarian episode came out. I did a podcast on evolutionary psychology the same week of my evolutionary psychology uh, pillar in men of action. This is the same week that I interviewed Dr. David Buss. Yeah. Does that make sense? Super this, efficient. The same week that I did my, my I, have, I have several sections on female friends. By the way, the, the one of the keys to gain access is to have a bunch of beautiful women in your life. Right. Beautiful women get you invited to the Playboy Mansion. They get you invited to the CES after parties. They get you invited to the millionaires in the billionaire's house. If you have a bunch of, if you're just the dude who just travels with like six or seven super beautiful women, yeah, you will just get invited to everything. So that's one of the things I teach. The same week I teach that lesson, I get hu these huge these Playboy models to go, like literally it's live. Well, if you guys buy my program and you get to that section, you will see this girl go and invite this other girl to come on my podcast right there in front of you. Yeah. Like I don't talk, and, and, I'm, and I'm away, we don't talk about it, we be about it. It is the difference between Mike Tyson talking shit about knocking out Bruce Sheldon and then actually knocking out Bruce Sheldon. Those are two different things. Yeah. Michael Jordan talking shit to Larry Bird or Michael Jordan scoring 63 on the Celtics in 1980, uh, 1986. Those are two different things. We don't talk about it. We be about it. A lot of people don't like that about our program because if you have a coaching program, one of the things you do is like, I'm theoretical. These are the right. things, you know, do it, do as I say, not as I do. And meanwhile, I'm out here in these streets, like actually doing the things that I say that I'm going to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm teaching you how to throw this party while I'm the only person in history. Look at, let me get, let me get close up on the camera. I am the only person in history to host the Maxim party in Miami and the Maxim party in Los Angeles within a 24 hour period. Damn. Call me out on that if, if I didn't actually do that. I'm the only person to ever do that. Why did I do that? Because I network with both of, with the people at both of those parties. And that's the reason why that happened. 
Um, and so, so I, I don't, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because I can teach you this. Right, right. I'm saying that because in my program, we don't talk about it. We be about it. We yeah. don't, this is not men of feelings. This is not men of trauma <laughs> release. It's not men of dithering. It's not men of blathering. It's not men of theory. It is men of fucking action. That's the name of the course. And like, uh, and I'm a former U.S. military officer. You will get spoken to like we, you're in the U.S. military. To some people, this doesn't work. If you want right. to pay me in order to tell you things that you want to hear, I mean, maybe I'll take your money. I probably won't, to be honest <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah. I'm too busy, but I, maybe I will. But if you want to, if you want me to tell you things that'll make you successful, bro, I will definitely do that. Do do that for you. And here's another thing, man. This is another real, real important secret. If I tell you something that makes you successful, by definition, it cannot feel comfortable. If things were comfortable that made you successful, we'd all be successful. Right. If I tell you you need to exercise this different way. Or if I tell you that you need to change your diet, or if I tell you that you need to start posting like this on social media, by definition, when I tell you your response is going to be, Michael, that doesn't feel genuine. Of course it doesn't feel genuine because you're not successful. Yeah, that's true. You're not successful. Everything I tell you won't feel genuine. Of course it won't. Everything I tell you that brings success into your life by definition will feel awkward. If you have a problem with that, then this is not going to be the program for you. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, like it's, a, we're just so hard and we have a community. Uh, my networking coaches are so like, there's 55 zero testimonials on my on MOA mentoring.com of guys doing the things that I say, they don't talk about it. They be about it. I don't tell you about how the improvements that I made for my clients. I don't have to, right. they do it on their own. <clears throat> they, they sit there and post like I do. I got one client. He's like, he, the dude's like four foot 11 and he's surrounded by like beautiful women <laughs> all the time, everywhere, all the fucking time. Yeah. Just gorgeous girls, bro. He hits me up. He's like, man, I don't have enough time for these girls that are like, Bullshit, Michael. No, looks, money, status. That's the only thing that matters. I'm like, ah, you forgot pre-selection, pimp. You yeah. forgot pre-selection. And so that's one of the things that I teach. I teach these guys because why pre-selection? We call it pre-selection in the, the uh, those guys in the manosphere. They talk call it pre-selection. The the term is mate choice copying. Mate hyphen choice copying. That's the term in psychology or yeah. evolutionary studies. And so I use mate choice copying to help men generate attraction with women. And so you know I do that so effectively that a lot of people who are, you understand, most coaches, they're not scam artists, but they don't do what they're saying. Right, right. Or they're retired from it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it's very rare that you're going to find a program where I'm doing the things I say, where I was like, I, here's how we do this, this, and this for an invite. And guess what? Babes in Toyland is December 1st. And your assignment for Babes in Toyland is each one of you is supposed to get six huge influencers to come and... All of you are going to bring toys for these children and nobody gets in free. I don't even get in free. It's yeah. a charity event. Don't ever ask me to get in free to a charity event. It's a fucking charity event. You're going to pay to get in there. We're raising money for kids. Don't ask me to get in free. Yeah. No freeloaders. And so, you know, you do that. And then these guys are like, okay, now I have pride in what I'm doing. Right. Now right. I have pride in this. And now we, you know, we take that pride. Now we raise money for animal rescue. Now we raise money for domestic abuse and human trafficking. Now we raise money for homeless children. That's, those are the things, the win-win situations that we do. And you're like, Michael, how do you end up meeting all these people? Because I host a charity for human trafficking, because yeah. I host a charity for domestic abuse, because I host a charity for homeless children. That's the way that I'm able to do it. That's, that's the answer. And it's just, it's very simple when you look at it from that situation that you just create win-win situations for other people. But uh, it, homo sapiens, like I said before, networking is an evolutionary adaptation. How are you able to do that? You're able to do that by surrounding yourself by people who are more successful than you and that know better than you. Myself, I don't even pretend to be an expert at building a sales team, but I know Cole Gordon is. Right, I know Cole right. Gordon is. And so I'm about to get Cole Gordon to help, to help coach my team. I'm not the, an expert at writing a sales letter, but I know Nick Cosman is. Yeah. I don't know how much money to spend to do my ad spend, but I know Ty Lopez does. And I know I can call him up and ask him. I don't know how to do Hey, man, I don't know what to do sometimes when I've got like 70, 80 girls coming to a party, but I know Dan Bilzerian does. And I'm going to hit up Dan Bilzerian and ask him about it. I don't know how to run an affiliate uh, uh, program. I don't know how to do that. But I know the guys at Hustle University does. So I know I can hit up Andrew Tate and I can know I can hit up Justin Waller and they can yeah. teach me how to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Humility to learn from people who know things that are better than me and the ability to create, create a network where I'm around people that are high status enough to where they can teach me these things. That's it. That's what I teach. That's what I teach. And you know what? Every one of those guys, well, not everyone, but a lot of those guys, they end up joining men of action because they want to learn the system that I like. Imagine if you're some super famous dude and you're sitting there talking to this guy and he's like, yeah, I actually did this, 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 and that. That's how we met. I'd be like, I'd like to learn how you figured that out. Right, right. I would like to know how you figured that out. I'd teach you how I got invited to the to the Playboy Mansion. I, so, so, here's the other thing. 
People will say these words and they sound like bullshit. And every time I say these words, then I will show you a picture of me with Crystal Hefner at the Playboy Mansion. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? they will be like, yeah, there were 54 girls at my birthday party last year and Dan Bilzerian showed up. Bullshit. And then there's the pictures. I'm like, oh, damn, I guess all of what he's saying is true. This is very hard for me to swallow that this nobody that doesn't have a blue check mark that isn't that famous is able to pull, pull off all these things. How's he able to do that? Well, because I use an evidence-based approach based in evolutionary studies. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's what I did. Dude. Well, killer fucking podcast. Like, we'd love to have you on again. Um, but we're, we're strapped for time. for So, uh, well, we're not doing four hours. This no, is the dude, first time I've never done four hours. What's going on? Well, I thought we did four hours. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. But where can people find you? Man, go on Instagram to Michael Sartain. Go on there. If you just want to learn about the program, go to moamentoring.com. Moamentoring.com. Go in there with skepticism. Go in there not believing a single. This is what I love. Go in there not believing a single thing I said, yeah. and then watch as every single thing I said, I just told you, none of it's an exaggeration. Every single thing turns out to be true. Then your mind is gonna swirl around with it a little bit and be like, how is this all true? And just just take yourself down this path. You know what, I still think this guy's a scam artist. That's okay, join the Discord server. Join the Facebook group. Right. And come on the free calls that we do every week. And then bring your skepticism there. Keep going. I, I encourage people. To, most, most coaches are like, be optimistic. Keep an open mind. I don't need you to keep an open mind because <laughs> I'm telling the goddamn truth. Everything yeah. I just told you is the truth, and I can prove it. I have the receipts. So be skeptical. Come to my program. Say everything I say is false, and let's just walk you through it step by step to the point where you have no choice but to understand that I created an evidence-based course that is uh, that works undeniably. It works for anybody. There's nothing special about me, the, but what I do is based on evolutionary studies. It's based on the knowledge of how uh, natural selection created humans to uh, to respond to certain type of stimuli, and yeah. we use that in order to gain higher st status for you, uh, which helps you with your networking. It helps you with your business. It helps you with your social media. It helps you with like this is all networking. It helps you with your dating. It right. helps you with your fitness. It helps you you know build your business. All of it. You can do this because, like I said, uh, networking is an evolutionary adaptation. Yeah, dude. Well, thank you so much for being on the of show. Of course. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, brother.